Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of NFL Draft Triple Take here on Steelers.com. Mike Pursuta from the Steelers Radio Network and Steelers.com, joined by Dale Lolly of the Steelers Radio Network, Steelers.com, and the SNR's The Drive with Matt Williamson. Matt also joining us. You can hear Matt on The Drive. You can catch his work on the Steelers Radio Network and Steelers.com. Guys, it's our 10th and final position preview. And before we get into the cornerbacks today, I just want to uh, give you both the tip of the cap. Uh, it's been fun doing these as we try to get people ready for the draft. Uh, you guys have clearly done your homework and you've brought it with the, uh, the type of passion and insight and just a little bit of a reverence that I think uh, we've all come to expect. So uh, great job and uh, can't wait for Thursday. Yeah, I hear you, Mike. Um, th especially this year. I mean, it feels like the, the, the build up to the draft this year has been about, oh, about four months long uh, because we've been locked away. But uh, yeah, it's all going to come to fruition on Thursday. Matt, I was curious, uh, no first round pick for the Steelers this year, but what uh, might that mean in terms of uh, how we see it unfold and I guess how they see it unfold? Uh, it's going to be a different second round and a different first pick because you actually get to watch instead of participate. I'm just kind of looking forward to that dynamic playing out. Yeah, and it's interesting how they'll handle Thursday internally too because obviously they're not all going to be in the same room. I'm sure that they will have their antenna up for maybe if something crazy happens, we'll trade up, but that's a 1% chance. I mean, I really think they're going to put their feet up on their lazy boy and watch it like we do on Thursday. <laughs> well, let's, <laughs> let's get to the corners. They're the last of our uh, 10 position groups uh, to, to assess here. And uh, I guess corner not uh, different uh, so much from running back, offensive tackle, quarterback, wide receiver. There's a top tier. There's, uh, there's uh, three, four, five guys that are pretty much above the crowd. But there is a, an interesting crowd uh, behind those guys. And uh, Matt, let's start with you. You're number 10, uh, Damon Arnett of the Ohio State University. I've got him a little higher, uh, but you have him at 10. Uh, please explain. Yeah, and I'll probably say this a couple times over the course of the podcast, but outside of the top two, the next two tiers are pretty blurry for me, that there's really 15 corners that probably could have made this list. I don't feel super strong that Arnett belongs at 10. But had a really good year, and we'll get to this with his, his running mate, Jeff Akuda. a lot of press man coverage. And when I was in the league, I mean, that was something that both wide receiver and corner and, you know, defensive back coaches taught me immediately was watch every tape, you, every rep you can of press man coverage because there's just not enough of it at the college level. And one of the biggest adjustments for corners and receivers alike, he can do some of that. He's a little bit overaged. He's not a super athlete, but he's a physical guy that's coming off a good year from a big school. Dale, your number 10 is uh, Amik Robertson of Louisiana Tech. Yeah, I, I think, you know, he's, he's a playmaker, Mike. I know he's a little undersized. He's, he's 5'8", 187. Uh, but, you know, the, you can't overlook the fact that in, in three seasons in college, he had 48 pass breakups and 14 interceptions. Uh, also had four sacks. He can do a little bit of everything. He, he probably projects a little bit more to the slot at the NFL level, uh, but certainly uh, he, he runs well. Uh, he can do everything that you want. And uh, I, the fact that he comes from a smaller school and is a smaller uh, guy doesn't bother me at all. He's a player. You know what? In terms of all the guys on this list, I think he's my favorite one to watch. Like some yeah. of our listeners should YouTube Amik Robertson's highlights because – you think Hilton's a nasty dude from the slot. I mean, this guy is all over the place, plays with passion, small but nasty, little bulldog. Yeah, I went with another guy who uh, projects as a slot, at least initially. And, Matt, I'm with you that, you know, 10 to 15 or maybe 5 to 15, uh, somewhat interchangeable. But yeah. uh, I'm going to uh, give a shout-out to Josiah Scott from uh, my alma mater, Michigan State. I've seen this guy play a lot over the last couple of years. And, uh, <laughs> over. I'll say, I'll say maybe a little bit, but, the, you know, there's a lot of familiarity here, and uh, I am speaking from experience observing him. Two years ago, Michigan State had maybe the worst offense in the country, which uh, shrouded the fact that it had one of the best defenses in the country. Wasn't as good last year, but still pretty good 
And Scott is one of the guys that's up this year. There's an edge rusher named Kenny Willickis. There's an inside linebacker named Joe Bocci. And there's a defensive tackle named Ray Claude Williams. These guys are all fifth round or later, but uh, they're competitive and they are playmakers. So uh, Josiah Scott makes my number 10. At number nine, I've got Noah Igbenogany. Yep. <laughs> uh, that's, a, that's a mouthful, but uh, he's, he's an interesting guy from a physical traits and a kind of heritage standpoint. Uh, his mother won a bronze medal in the 92 Olympics, four by 100. He ran indoor and outdoor track at Auburn and also played corner. And uh, Matt, you scouted enough to know you can't run, you can't play corner. No, right. There's a lot of tools here to work with. He had a really good day against Alabama's awesome group of receivers. Only a one interception, though. I mean, it's safe to say he is a work in progress. You kind of mentioned his background. He's got a thick, stocky, square build. Uh, I think he's the youngest guy on this list, too. He's not even close to 21 years old. So a lot to work with, a lot of traits here. Yeah, you went with him at number eight. Your yeah. number nine is Robertson from La Tech in uh... – Dale, you're number nine, uh, Cameron Dantzler of Mississippi State. Yeah, you know, he's a, he's a bigger corner, uh, 6'2", 188. Uh, didn't run real well at the combine, but, uh, you know, he, he's really uh, a pretty clean prospect. Uh, I think he's probably better suited to play with a zone team because of the lack of speed. But uh, I like his, uh, his game a lot. And, and coming out of the SEC, he's seen a lot of the top uh, receivers in this draft and uh, held up pretty well against them. We'll stay with you, Dale. Take us to your number eight, uh, Jeff Gladney from TCU. Yeah, he's an, another guy uh, a little smaller. That's the, the one thing that you look at when you look at a lot of these top corners in this draft. They're all six foot or bigger. There's only a couple that are that are smaller. Gladney is one of those. He's 5'10", 191. Uh, but he's aggressive, can play inside or out, and, and uh, tested pretty well. I, I think he'll be, I think he'll be a, a good, solid cornerback. I didn't put him as high on this list just because – some of the other guys are a little bit uh, better sized than him, but I like him, him, his game a lot. Yeah, I was higher on Gladney, but I do have some concerns. You mentioned he's skinny. I mean, he looks rail thin. I mean, he came in at the combine at 191. I'm sure he bulked up for that, but you watch yeah. him on tape. He looks very lean. I mentioned age before. He's the oldest guy on this list, but he's a good football player. I had him higher, but could have easily been seven for me. Yeah, I got him higher too, Matt. I got him at five, and, I, you know, he is smaller, but – well, he plays bigger than his size, doesn't, mm -hmm. doesn't he? He is, he is an in-your-face, uh, get after it. He, does, he doesn't think he's uh, – what, what's another, he doesn't think he's 5'10", 191. He, he plays like a big corner. No, you're right. I mean, he is aggressive, throws his body around. I had him at four, but, again, the difference between four and six and seven to me wasn't a real – it was a pretty fine line. I had Christian Fulton of LSU as my number eight guy, and uh, one of the things that intrigued me about him – uh, he was suspended for the 2017 season, and his coach, Ed Orgeron, was uh, really complimentary of how he handled himself during suspension. Now, he came to practice and, and reportedly showed up and competed every day and worked and never let it get him down. Matt, you know, uh, as a scout or as an observer of football, cornerbacks are going to get beat. They're going to have adversity that they're going to have to face. It's not going to be smooth sailing all the time. Do you, do you upgrade a guy who handles adversity? Or do you, oh. downgrade, or you downgrade him because there was too much adversity? <laughs> well, you don't want too much. And you can't – you got to have a short memory. You got to be like a closer in baseball. I had Fulton three, but again, sort of reluctantly. And to your point, anyone that watched the national championship game saw him – he had a long, long evening. I mean, he had a tough go of it against a really good group of receivers. But he is considered a pretty high-character guy, competitive – I mentioned how I stress press coverage. He has a lot of that. There's a lot of tape of him pressing receivers, long arms. So I had him at three. But one thing I really feel strong about in this draft and might come to fruition around pick 20 or so, I don't want to be the team taking the third corner off the board. Are you, are you seeing as much press in the NFL these days? Absolutely. I mean, that's the luxury. That's what everybody wants. I mean – you can't get the Tom Brady in under 2.2 seconds, but if I can press his receivers and make him hold it for 2.6, maybe I can disrupt the play. Dale, yeah. uh, you went with A.J. Uh, Terrell of Clemson. Speaking of guys who handle adversity. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, I, I think he's – you see this kid um, 
again, uh, third team all ACC uh, in, in 2018, led the team in interceptions with three uh, first team last year. And, you know, he's, he's a nice player. Uh, and, and, you know, he, he doesn't have uh, a lot of the, 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 uh, I don't know. I, I just liked him again. I, I think that when you look at the, look at these cornerbacks uh, I'm, I'm looking at the, the guys who have played in some of the big games, uh, done it against a high level competition. That's why I had Fulton at three as well uh, from LSU. Uh, but Terrell, again, I think you're splitting hairs here. Six uh, one one ninety five can do a little bit. Uh, he does struggle with the ball in the air at times. That's why I have him a little bit lower uh, on this list than uh, some of the other guys. Uh, but uh, you know, corners with his size and speed, I think he ran a four four two at the combine. They get drafted uh, pretty high. Yeah, it was interesting. Uh, Mike Mayock uh, did a hit on NFL Network at the combine. Yeah, that was his old gig before he became the Raiders GM. And they asked him about you know where you look for certain positions. And he said, well, wide receivers and corners, uh, you watch uh, the Ohio State-Clemson game. And, and <laughs> see, you know, watch those guys going at it. Uh, that, was, uh, that was some pretty interesting stuff. Dale, your number six is Jalen Johnson of Utah. Matt, you have uh, Jalen Johnson of Utah at number seven. And uh, Terrell of Clemson at number six. Talk a little bit about what you see in Johnson. Um, understands route concepts really well. He's a little bit short-armed. He's not the most physically imposing, but he was productive. Um, Utah, he's going to have a little bit of a jump. You kind of mentioned Clemson, LSU, going to get the Bama, Ohio State. He's not, he, he didn't deal with the level of receivers that some of these other guys did, but um, I think he's versatile. He was my seven. I like him. I don't love him. And, and kind of to Dale's point about – Terrell, Johnson, even Fulton, Gladney. A lot of these guys, to me, project as really good number two corners. You know, they're kind of the Alvin Harper to the Michael Irvin guys. Although, not the only Utah guy and uh, not the only Utah defensive guy. No. Uh, that's, a, that's a coming program, is it not? And uh, uh, this year in particular, I thought that defense was really uh, worthy of attention. Yeah, they got a bunch of guys in this draft. I don't, I don't know what they've got behind all these guys because uh, there's like five or six uh, Utah defenders in this draft that, uh, man, uh, to replace all that at a place like Utah, it's one thing to do it at LSU or Clemson or somewhere like that, uh, but to have to do it at Utah, it's going to be interesting to see what they have uh, coming back next year. My number six was uh, Trayvon Diggs from Alabama, and uh... – I just want to know if he can cover Stephon Diggs. If he can do that, he's going to be a player. Right? <laughs> I, like, I like the brother thing. I like the dad thing. That's not the first time this has come up. Uh, I don't think it's the deciding factor, but I think when you got players of relatively equal ability and physical skill sets, if the tape's not that different, why not get the guy who should have an inside track to the National Football League, right? Yeah, I hear you, Mike. I mean, I'm a, I'm a big Diggs fan. I have him at five was really tempted to put him at three. Like A.J. Terrell, LSU's passing game tore him apart. Don't watch that tape, but they did that to everybody. Um, came to Alabama as an athlete wide receiver, plays the ball like that, far and away the biggest guy on this list. Um, him and Nakuda actually have the, the best wingspan. I mean, this guy is a big body, physical but the questions with him were, how fast is he? And we never got a time on him. So I dinged him a little bit there, but I, I kind of hesitate to do that because the tape is really strong. He seems like a Richard Sherman off the ball, attack downhill type guy to me. Yeah, I agree. I, you know, you know he's had uh, pretty good coaching and uh, the bloodlines are there. Uh, I like him a lot as a player. Uh, you mentioned the size. Uh, that's the only reason I didn't have him higher as well is because we don't know exactly how fast he is. And, well, you know, the last thought we have of him is, uh, you know, thoughts we are, are, are playing against teams like LSU and getting torn up a little bit. But, mm -hmm. man, when you, when you watched, uh, watched a Bama game, he was always around the football, uh, very good football player. Yeah, and that's, I mean, of all the attributes that uh, Alabama has earned and all the accolades over the years in this Nick Saban here, he's a DB's coach at heart. That, that's that's kind of his thing. something, right? yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, Matt, you've got uh, Gladney from TCU at four. We've hit him pretty hard. Uh, Dale, you've got Diggs at four. Uh, my number four, as I uh, flip the page here, <laughs> Jalen Johnson of Utah. We've gone over him. Uh, I've got Terrell from Clemson. 
at three. Matt's got uh, Christian Fulton at number three. Dale, you've got Christian Fulton at number three. So let's uh, let's jump ahead to number two, and uh, we're probably all going to be in agreement here. I haven't looked at uh, what you guys sent me yet, but uh, I've got C.J. Henderson of Florida at two and uh, Jeff Okuda from Ohio State at number one. Dale, you've got uh, – C.J. Henderson and Jeff Akuda 2-1. And Matt, you've got uh, Henderson 2 and Akuda 1. Uh, that's probably the way just about everybody sees it, right, Matt? I think so. I mean, you're hearing some buzz from the media, and I really hesitate to believe any of that, that some teams might covet Henderson even more than Akuda. I think that's crazy talk. But I do think there are 16, you know, top-notch first-round prospects, and these two both fit that bill. Henderson has loads of ability. I mean, he is a very easy mover, big, strong body. Doesn't like the tackle, though. Yeah, that's a, that's a problem with him. Uh, and so we'll see, you know, there, to Matt's point about the other corners, uh, these are two corners that I think could be number one corners. Yeah. Right? These are the, but these are the only two guys that you look at in this draft who, who have that kind of ability. But, I mean, I, I just – if you watch Akuda's game, it's much more well-rounded than Henderson in terms of, uh, you know, being willing to tackle. Um, you know, I think Henderson makes some business decisions, and we'll see if that continues on into the NFL. Do you think some of that buzz, Dale, uh, Akuda is the more well-rounded and, and the, the further along guy right now in a lot of people's eyes, but does Henderson maybe have uh, even a higher upside, and is that generating the buzz? Well, I mean, he's faster, and he might be a little bit more athletic. But, man, Akuda is really good when you, when you turn on his tape. And, uh, you know, they both have the confidence that you want. Again, I just, I just wonder about him, uh, you know, if you're not willing to, uh, to go after the, the running backs or the guys on the edge uh, at the college level, are you going to suddenly be willing to do so at the NFL level? Or, or does he think he's Deion Sanders? Yeah, along the Dion lines, I mean, you mentioned man-to-man -man coverage, though, Mike. I mean, that's what he does best, you know, at the college level, line him up against number one receivers, leave him on an island, and he handled that extremely well. Yeah, I, Points well taken about only a couple of number one guys, but the, the other guy's pretty important, and even the slot guys are pretty important, are they not, Matt? I mean, if you have one lousy corner, they're going to find that guy and beat him like a drum, aren't they? Absolutely, and – you know, you mentioned Scott from Michigan State. We brought up Robertson from Louisiana Tech. There's probably three others that, you know, Darnay Holmes from UCLA. I really like John Reed from Penn State. You don't that are, too, right? Yeah, that are all slots yeah. that I think will – I think the NFL is finally catching up to the idea that we better use second, third-round picks on these guys because they're going to be on the field two-thirds of the time. Uh, we can't let the West Welkers just chip away at us time and time again. We at least got to compete. And, you know, they're always going to be on the small end, and that doesn't adhere themselves to the old-school scout that wants the six-foot guy with long arms that runs a 4-3. But they're very valuable, not to mention, I mean, they run down as gunners on punt teams and things like that for you, too. Feisty slot dudes are not easy to find. Yeah, I, I agree with you. That's a, Deion Sanders was making that point throughout the combine coverage. They, they all seem to be – you pick a slot guy in the fifth round, and he ends up – Playing like a third rounder. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, if you if you look at it now, uh, in terms of value, you would value a slot cornerback more so than a run stuffing defensive tackle. He's going to play more. Uh, the runs, you know, the, the run stuffing defensive tackle is going to be on the field one, maybe two snaps, uh, you know, per, uh, on first, maybe second down, where that slot corner may be out there eighty percent of the time for you. And the thing about them too is. You know, I'm sitting here looking at Robertson's numbers. He's not even 5'8 and a half. He's 187 pounds. You know, we've seen this with Hilton time and time again. They play close to the ball. I mean, Adrian Peterson runs right at you. David DeCastro pulls around the edge and smashes corners. Or you're trying to blitz. I mean, you're in there with the big people. It's not for the faint of heart. No, it's not. But uh, it, looked like, uh, it looks like there are some guys that are willing to, to take that on uh, in this year's cornerback class. Guys, that's going to do it. Uh, for the corners and uh, that's going to do it for our draft preview so uh, the next time we get together uh, uh, we'll be uh, right before the draft uh, I think we're doing some work on Wednesday night and then uh, we'll have some more uh, Friday uh, early afternoon to continue getting people ready for that second round when the Steelers make their first selection uh, again great job really 
really enjoyed this series of uh, draft previews here. And I want to thank everybody for checking us out and remind everyone, uh, if, if you didn't already, go back and watch all the previous segments again because there's going to be a test later. And uh, <laughs> we're going to be bringing it. But uh, that's going to do it for now for Dale Lolly and for Matt Williamson. I'm Mike Pursuta. You have been listening to uh, another edition of Steelers.com's NFL Draft Triple Take. Uh, we'll look forward to uh, coming back at you again very soon.